Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Hi, folks. Welcome back. And those of you that are new, welcome. I went and saw Sound of Freedom, so that'll probably screw up the algorithm, but I don't care. Uh, I saw it tonight, and I wanted to give it while it was fresh in my mind a, a review. Now, I want to say up front, I'm not going to put any spoilers in this for those of you that want to see it. Uh, it'll give you a rough outline of the movie, but it's not going to really tell you anything. It'll spoil it for you. I definitely want to say this. Those of you that are consider seeing it, but because of the subject matter, think that it's too horrific to look at. I shouldn't say tastefully done, but it's done in a way that you see nothing that's way over the line outrageous as far as the things that are done to children in this movie, the premise. Like they'll show a young girl on a bed and a guy walking towards the bed and they cut away. They don't show anything. So those of you that are maybe a little sensitive to that or anybody sensitive to that for that matter, don't worry about that. You're not going to see anything graphic, in other words. So I'll make that clear. Now, I watched it at a Regal Theater here in upstate New York in Binghamton, and I know they said some AMC theaters were having trouble with air conditioning and fire alarms and leaving the lights on, and there was like a, a, a people just not see this movie. I think they were isolated incidents. Like my understanding is the PR guy for Angel Films, which distributes this movie, AMC, in response to some of the things that were happening at their theaters, I think it was individual movie managers and not the company itself, opened it up to 445 more theaters. And that came from Angel Productions, which did this movie, so I have to take that as truth. Now, the review itself, give you a rough, rough synopsis, the individual, the main character, Bill Ballard, in real life, the actor that plays him also played Christ in The Passion of the Christ, works for DHS. And, of course, he's after P-E-D-O-S-F-I-L-E's in the United States. He was doing it for 12 years and caught hundreds of them. And that has to, it drains on you mentally to see all this evil and misery and it, and it did on him. But it got to the point where people were asking him, how many have you caught? And he'll say the X amount. But how many kids have you saved? And the answer is none. So he decides to go to his bosses at DHS and put it like a sting operation and get some money together. And they put together like an Epstein Island type sting operation to bring a lot of children and young adults, as well as the people that were running them and the people that are running the organizations, so they can so get them all one big swoop. And the rest of it I won't tell you because it will ruin it. But you see here in the picture, the young girl that's sitting on the bed and the poster, the young boy that's being hugged, they're brother and sister. And they're the main characters in the movie itself. Now here's a scene here with the boy. He got, as you can see, he's with the DHS guy. And he's begging him to save his sister. And that's basically what the movie is about. It does show how they were grabbed. They were conned. Their father was conned. And I'm not going to go into details. It will ruin the movie. But my understanding, that's not normally the way kids are abducted. It doesn't really matter the method. And that's some of the criticism. I'm going to do a separate video on the critiques and reviews of this movie. I was going to put together with this one, but I felt it would make the video too long. And here's a scene from the movie itself, which shows a moving kids from a van into a cargo uh, carrier to go on a ship. Now, these kids, my understanding, are shipped all over the world. It's quite a deal. They said that of all the illegal activity that goes on in the world, child slavery is now bigger business than the illegal weapons trade. Not as big as the illegal drug trade, but it's getting close. It's getting close. And here's a scene from the movie. Like I said, I'd show some video from the trailer, but I'm afraid of a copyright infringement. So I just grabbed a couple of photos. This is one of the kids that's grabbed the beginning of the movie. 
and the scam that was pulled on the parents is sitting in a room basically waiting for whatever they want to do to them and they're sold, bought and sold. It's it's not a happy movie, folks. You'll never walk out of there with smiling. And I think that's the entire point of why this has to be seen. This is an evil that I think even, maybe even is on the same level as Nazi Germany in the 1930s and 40s. This is, the only difference is, this isn't a government that's doing them, at least directly. This will tug at your heart and your emotions. You'll get teary-eyed. It's, it's, a, it's based on a true story. Those that criticize the movie saying, this isn't exactly how it really happened in real life. He's making this up and exaggerating. It's not a documentary. It's a movie. And movies have to be entertaining. Any movie. And I'll tell you the truth, honestly, that's the one thing Hollywood the last few years really sucks at. Entertaining movies. I saw a video here of a channel called Popcorn in Bed. And her and her sister, they're quite popular. They're movie reactors. And they rented out a movie theater for Top Gun. The, the, the new Top Gun film. That was about a year ago. And at the end, the whole audience is cheering. And the girl, who's apolitical as they come, turned to the camera and said, Hollywood, this is what we want. Why won't you give us what we want? Hollywood comes out with so much crap. This is based on things that are going on now. Like I said, it's not every single detail is exactly right because it's not a documentary. But I think this movie has to be seen. And one of the reasons I think it has to be seen but it brings awareness to what's going on is also the far left progressives reaction to this movie. Now I'm going to go with that in a separate video. But their outrage at it, it just staggers the imagination. And I'm going to I think I'm going to explain why in that other video, so look out for that, why I think they're outraged. This is what they call the parallel economy that Ben Shapiro and many others talk about. When people were thrown off of Patreon and other uh, money-raising sites because of their political views, other companies popped up. This is a parallel economy to Hollywood. To give you some background, this was made in 2018. It was made by a subsidiary of 20th Century Fox. Well, Fox was sold to Disney, if you remember, except for Fox News. And Disney saw they had the rights to this movie, and they just shelved it, just stuck it somewhere. And, and so the people that produced this movie got a hold of Disney and said, listen, if you're not going to do anything with it, we're going to give you your money back that, that you gave us or your company that you bought gave us. We're giving you the money back. So we can distribute it, and Disney said, fine, we're not going to do anything with it anyway. So why Disney wouldn't do anything with it? That's up for speculation. This is, movie is heart-wrenching. It's a high production value. It's not like a lot of faith-based films, as they call it. I don't think it's faith-based. God has only mentioned this twice. I think that was purposely done. It isn't about religion, it's about humanity. And the evils that are out there. Uh, this movie has to be seen. Now, what are the average American citizen or person will do after they see this? That's up to you. Get a hold of your state officials, your Congress member, your, your state's U.S. state senators, your state senators, everybody you can that's involved either directly or indirectly to help stop this. It's never going to be stopped. We all know that, just like drugs. It's never going to be stopped. Well, we can do the best we can with the knowledge that we do some research, get some knowledge to make it much harder for these monsters to do this. It, it's amazing to me. It truly and truly is. I think it's worth seeing. It's worth talking about. Do not hide it. It shouldn't be swept under the rug. And I'll leave you with this. One of the main lines in the movie 
that really tugs at your heart and your soul is the line they asked him why he's risking his life to do these things, his mental health as well as his life to stop the P-D-O-S F-I-L stop them and also to save children and his line was because God's children are not for sale I get goosebumps when I said that until the next time God bless, goodbye, and good luck.